Hey guys, good to see you again today. And well, technically I can't see you, but I sure hope that it's good for you to see me. Well, today we have a very interesting episode um, for a couple of reasons, which I'll go through in a while. But the first question that, well, in fact, the only question that we're trying to answer today is, can your PC output Dolby Atmos to the Sonos Arc soundbar? Let's see how we get about doing it. So as typical in all my videos, I try to give you the summary up front. So you don't have time to stay around then, sure. The answer to that question is yes, you can play back Dolby Atmos to the Sonos Arc soundbar. Yep. Oh, how? Okay, sorry. Yeah. How do we do that? Now, it is um, not going to be a cheap undertaking. Let me just say that out first. Now, a couple of things happened over the last couple of days. In fact, maybe the last one week that um, got me spending a lot of money. And the endeavor ended up in me being able to output Dolby Atmos from my PC, which is right in front of me. Um, okay, this is the wrong camera angle, but right in front of me, to the LG CX TV, which will then output the Atmos to the Sonos Arc. And I got full glorious Dolby Atmos on the S2 app showing up. So how do I go about doing that? Now, before we go on to answer that question, I have a couple of things to um, share with you on how I got to this journey, all right? Now, it started with a very innocent upgrade to the monitor that I'm using. Uh, oh, how do I go about doing this? Maybe I just show you what I have um, by using this GoPro camera. Okay. So this is the GoPro. This is the Gigabyte M28U. It's a 4K 144 hertz refresh rate monitor. Very high-end monitor. Uh, the price is okay. I bought it in Singapore for just about $1,000. So it works out to be about 750, maybe just a little bit less than 750 US dollars. So all good. And if you look at what I have here, now this is the graphics card. Now, why do I need a 3060 NVIDIA 3060 video card? Because the new 3000 series video cards from NVIDIA sports HDMI 2.1, which will connect to the monitor, which is HDMI 2.1. But with this combination, yes, you'll be able to get your 120 Hertz and everything that you expect out of a HDMI 2.1 connection. But the problem is that there's no way to get sound out from this monitor because there is no e-arc in any monitor, which brings us to this TV here. So this TV here is an LG CX. Now the LG CX is a 120 Hertz panel. It accepts HDMI 2.1 in, and it will be able to receive Dolby Atmos sounds and playback. So basically the combination goes like uh, going from the graphics card connected to the TV, HDMI 2.1, because they both have HDMI 2.1, and it connects to the Sonos Arc, which will then play back the Dolby Atmos. I'll give you a short demo later, but before we go on to that, let me explain to you what a busy week this has been. Okay, so if you look at what I have in front of me, this is the monitor that I told you about. This is a new graphics card. It cost me also about a thousand Singapore dollars, which is close to 750 US dollars. And if you look at what I have there, this is a Rodecaster. It's a mixer. I thought I up my game a little bit uh, just to improve the quality of sound on my channel so that you have a better time, you know, enjoying this channel. And well, for that, you require microphones. So this here is a Procaster. Uh, there is a NT1, it's a condenser mic, so it picks up more sound. I wanted that to pick up more recording, better recording, but uh, well, we'll get to that in a bit. And up here, which I can pull it right down, is a port mic. Well, I actually started out with this first, but I didn't think the sound was good. It sounded a little bit muffled, which is why I went to this Procaster. Now, besides that, you can see a few other things that I was a little bit busy with. Well, I, I bought this pair of headphones. Um, 
is light because you know a lot of editing and I just couldn't wear the heavier headphones that I had on and I needed the wire because it will go to um, the mixer. Well, well, actually for a wireless audio channel, I sure have a lot of cables lying around. So sorry about that. Oh, yes, that. Um, okay, now how do I get it to look like they are the same size? Yep, this angle makes them look like they're the same size, but nope. This is the Echo 4th Gen, and that's the Echo uh, 4th Gen 2. Oh, no, no. This is the Echo Dot. Sorry about that. 4th Gen, and that's the Echo, right? So that sports a 3-inch woofer, and this one is slightly smaller. Um, the video is not meant for today. I will get to the video in a little bit. And for this, uh, I also got them in a pair. Good. Good job. We will talk about that in a little bit. Oh, uh, well, GMMK Pro keyboard. Looks like I have been very busy over the last couple of nights. Ah, okay, something else here. This you have to see. Okay, I, I think, uh, you know what? Let me switch back to the regular view. Oh my God, I, I thought that would be very giddyfying to watch. Okay, so what do I have here? Okay, look at this. Now, I wanted to do a recording, right, of the sound that is coming from the speakers because I wanted to present you guys something that is more accurate, more, uh, more descriptive, or rather more informative about the kind of sound that is coming out from the speakers which I test. And I realized that, you know, even with this expensive mic, that expensive mic, and even this NT1 in front of me uh, with the mixer, I still wasn't getting the results that I was desiring. And one thing that was sorely missing was actually the spatial audio. So you can't actually tell scape. You can't actually tell the sound stage, which is such an important part of the Sonos Arc, if you ask me, right? It's not just about the frequency response. Of course, this channel was started on the premise of us trying to figure out what is what was wrong with the Sonos Arc uh, when it was first launched about the bass response not being up to mark and the treble response being uh, overly harsh. But well, I think that is all over. And right now we are chasing soundstage, right? So we want to know how well this Sonos Arc sounds like. So obviously after all these experiments failed, um, just one day I was using this Apple's, uh, you know, original earpiece, this wired earpiece, which is a oh, convoluted mess. I hate wires. Therefore the wireless already found. But anyway, so wires, right? If you look at these headsets and if you see what is here, right? This is actually the volume control. And to the back of it, if you look at what it says here, there's a mic sign, right? So the mic is actually on this inline um, proje projection here, inline device, whatever you call it. Lah. Okay. And it is one mic, right? And because it's one mic, it's only going to be picking up uh, mono sounds. So you can't even get stereo separation. But I have a H1N, a Zoom H1N, which is an XY stereo mic. I also have the XYM, whatever Sony um, mic that supposedly captures stereo. I tried that too, and it still didn't capture the soundscape that I was after. Then comes in this device here, again, wires. Somebody tell me, what is this channel about? Wireless audio? Oh gosh. Uh, well, I just have to show you what this device is. This is a Sennheiser MBO headset. MBO. MBO seems to be a Sennheiser soundbar. You know that two, three thousand dollar soundbar that has, I don't know, God knows how many five inch uh, woofers inside, but I never got around to testing it. It was too expensive for my taste anyway. Again, let's switch back to this angle. Okay, this is that Sennheiser Ambio Smart headset. Okay, notable, there is this inline thing here as well. So if you take a look at it, that's the mic. Okay, so it will record mono sound. But what is special about this headset, which is only compatible to iOS devices, by the way, because of the lightning connector, is that on each side of the headset, 
they are mites. Now, this opens up a whole world of possibilities. And what possibilities are we talking about? We are talking about 3D sound recording. This is what they call a binaural recording. And binaural sound should not be confused with stereo. Stereo is left and right. Now, recently, Apple released the Atmos soundtrack, released the spatial audio. And I was terribly confused over the last couple of weeks, maybe two weeks, right? What is accurate? We have been listening to songs in stereo and we think that the instrument is supposed to be there, the guitar is supposed to be there. And when Atmos came in to mess up the mix, just bear in mind, right? All these sounds, they are mixed by sound engineers at the studio, right? They're recording the instrument. They're miking each instrument almost uh, in individually. And they will decide that, okay, this instrument needs to be here. This instrument needs to be there based on what they are seeing in the studio. So whatever we hear, it, we are up to the mercy of the person who is doing the mix, right? If he thinks that the guitar, when he visually sees that it's there, um, and he's placing that recording, that particular track, right? Out of the one of dozens of tracks, uh, somewhere towards the middle, then that's what you're going to hear. And it's no longer accurate. But what binaural recording does is that the mic is placed right at the human ears, right? And there's this dead space here, which is basically your head. Um, some are more dense. <laughs> some are fuller. Some are empty. I, I don't know, right? It differs from person to person depending on the physiological makeup of the person, the brains. Lah. Anyway, so there is this difference in what your left ear hears and what your right ear hears, right? So when there's a sound on the right of your head, this mic is going to pick up the sound. This mic, it still picks up the sound, but it picks up a bounced off sound, maybe from the wall there, and maybe indirectly, it's supposed to pick up something here, but there's also a delay. And when this effect is combined into a recording, you start getting a lot more information. And this has nothing to do with what the engineers are mixing because this is what the two years are hearing. So this particular device here, and I have uh, studied a lot more into binaural audio. This is my first step into this. I have ordered in some of the equipment to help me try to see if I can capture the sound more realistically and accurately for you to hear. Some people will tell me that, um, you know, you don't record speakers, you don't demo speakers, right? Because it's still dependent on what the viewer, you, are listening to. But I still think it gives you a relative uh, kind of sensation on whether it works better than the other or not. So relatively, yes, but absolutely, uh, if there's no basis of comparison, then you can't really tell whether that's good or not as good. So usually in my videos, I try to pull in uh, points of references. So you'll see a lot of uh, this versus that kind of video uh, in my channel, right? Now, without further ado, what I'm going to do is uh, basically go back to the topic that we are uh, we have on hand, which is, are you able to get Dolby Atmos from the PC? Now, this PC I'm running here is a Windows 10 PC, and uh, it is connected to, yep, here, this is the second screen, okay? And I have some files here, which I want to uh, show you, all right? So over here is the Dolby Atmos demo track, which I think a lot of you have seen before. Um, okay, before I start it, I have to set my PC to output the sound to the LG TV here, okay? And just to show you what I have here, so this is the, this is the Sonos app, okay? And if I were to play, okay, this is the Sonos app. You saw that pop up? Okay. This is Dolby Atmos. Okay. I'm going to rewind it back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to record using this binaural headset. 
and you'll hear for yourself whether you can find that the soundstage is actually better recorded. Now, this is the TV I have here, and this is the Sonos Arc. The subwoofers are placed um, at different parts of the room. I have two of them in pair. And the rear speakers are actually the Sonos 5s. And the Sonos 5s, they are placed quite, uh, well, halfway back in the room, but I will be sitting in the middle of the whole sound field. And if a sound comes from the back, or if the top firing sounds are shooting upwards towards the ceiling and coming down, this pair of binaural headset, when it's doing the binaural stereo, binaural recording, it will be able to capture that small sensation of where the sound is coming from. Now let's see how that works. Hey, so I am ready to do the recording anytime. This is the camera view that you're still going to be getting. I will be turning myself to face there. So you won't actually have my point of view, but the sound that you're listening to will be exactly what I'm hearing through my ears, right? Because the two mics are actually placed right where my ears are. Let's get to this. So how did that sound? Now, I forgot to warn you guys that to get the best effect out of this, you actually need to be wearing a pair of headphones. All right? So if you listen to this on your phone or on a TV, then you might not get the right effect because bear in mind, the two mics are here. It is recording what I'm hearing at this particular point. So the best place to play back is actually using headphones. Okay, now, so what I just shown you was an Atmos clip that was played on my PC that is connected to this LG CX TV through an HDMI 2.1 connection and then e arc out to the Sonos Arc. And I got Sonos Arc to play Atmos. So can you get Atmos out of your PC? Let's say you're trying to watch things off your NAS, you want to set up a HD or home theater PC, HD PC, or if any game titles on your PC supports Atmos, I'm not sure because I don't really game much, then that will be how you're going to be getting through Atmos out from your PC setup. So there you go. If you have a PC and you have the correct graphics card, in which case this is a 3 series, a 3000 series graphics card. This is the RTX 3060 connected via HDMI 2.1 to the LG CX TV, which also has four 2.1 HDMI 2.1 ports. Then your go, right? But of course, the Sonos Arc needs to be connected to the LG TV or any eARC capable TV through, well, an eARC port. 
So there you go. I hope today's episode has been interesting. And if all the tech that I've mentioned, including this uh, Alexa uh, Echo Dot, oops, I just said. Hmm, I don't know that. I'm just not used to this. I have not used uh, before. Yeah. So I'll be reviewing this once I get around to doing this. Um, if there's anything else that you're interested in that I've shown you right on my desk, including these mice, all right, just go ahead and ask me in the comments section below. If there is a requirement, I will gladly do a video on it. So I'll see you guys in my next video. <laughs>